Drum roll. The Oscar goes to Sound of Metal. The Sound of Metal has recently won Academy Awards for Best Editing and Best Sound, and it's absolutely well-deserved. I personally watched the film a few months back, and it has stuck with me since. And as someone who is already deaf in one ear and frequently attends metal concerts, its central theme of hearing loss and how to cope with it hit me especially hard. It's quite unlike any film that I've ever personally seen in a sense that, well, it strips away one of the two senses required to fully experience a film. Sound. Instead of clear, audible dialogue, we're oftentimes forced to hear the world through the deteriorating ears of the main character, Ruben. The film is heartbreaking and oftentimes difficult to watch, not to mention frustrating to listen to. It doesn't shy away from the horror and anger that accompanies hearing loss. But the film also inspires hope, as Ruben is constantly reminded that inner peace and sense of purpose are more important than his ability to hear. Today on The Edit Cove, we return to how editing makes this scene great with a bang. First, I'd like to touch on editing from a character's point of view. And finally, I'll take a deep dive into my favorite scene of the film, which just so happens to be the final scene. And since I'll be jumping straight to the end, here's your obligatory spoiler alert notice. And really quick, if you're interested in film theory, subscribe to The Edit Cove to never miss an opportunity to learn a thing or two about how the pros do what they do. Let's begin. The Sound of Metal is told from the point of view of Ruben, a metal drummer who loses his hearing. The loss of hearing is central to the story that is being told, and alongside communicating that sensation, Mr. Nielsen had to communicate the horror as well as the sense of hopelessness that Ruben initially feels to the audience. This led to a unique challenge in film editing. When are we in his head, hearing what Ruben is hearing? And when are we out? This question seems to be a major driving force for determining how to build scenes following the first act. And here's what editor Mikkel E.G. Nielsen has to say about the intricacies of telling the story from Ruben's point of view, and how the audience is meant to experience the world through Ruben's eyes. My job is to try to give you a sonic experience, so I would think that you would only notice the sound, and I'm very grateful that people also notice the editing then. Uh, it was about uh, finding that balance between the internal and the external world of Ruben, and then peel off anything that goes against us being with Ruben, meaning that we can never be ahead of Ruben, we have to stay with Ruben and, the, and know the same as Ruben. Then we go on his journey, uh, and then to try to find that balance uh, was just uh, an incredible journey. Editor Mikkel E.G. Nielsen, in his interview with Steve Hallfish, says this. For some people, the kind of music that we start the movie with is horrifying or way too aggressive. It kind of gets you on the edge of your seat. Then, you go into this very silent opening of an airstream. Him sleeping, and he makes a smoothie, which is a loud noise. And then you see him using compressed air to clean his mixer, and then he puts on a record. So you just awaken the senses by hearing those loud noises and quiet noises, but also visually with your eyes. And then, when we got to the point where he says, sound check, that's the last word before he loses his hearing. Then, you go into this world of him losing. You feel that you're going with him. Then, it's about how long can you stay in that world? And when do you want to go in or out of that world with your character? Because there are also some things that we need to understand. We need to understand how big of a loss this is. You, on your right ear, were 28%, and on your left ear, you were 24%. That's what? If I experienced that myself, it would be completely terrifying. That's all from editor Mikkel E.G. Nielsen. And if you're interested to hear more from him, you can read the rest of his interview with Steve Hallfish in the link below, and there's some incredibly insightful stuff there. Now, if you pay close attention to the times we go in and out of Ruben's head, we start to notice a trend. The times we hear the world through his perspective 
is when Mr. Nielsen wants the audience to experience what the main character is experiencing. Doing so allows the audience to really connect with Ruben and sympathize with him, which is a super important task, especially in emotional dramas. The moments we cut out of Ruben's point of view is primarily used to help communicate something to the audience. And if the entire film was from Ruben's perspective, and let's say we never jumped out, it would be incredibly difficult to tell the story and, let's face it, a little exhausting for the audience. The first example comes from the pharmacy scene. We initially hear the world through Ruben's perspective, and as Mr. Nielsen states, it is terrifying. But we jump out by cutting to this wide angle, which momentarily separates Ruben from the audience, and we become almost like another customer in the store. We can then hear what the pharmacist is saying, which gives the audience a bit more information that we couldn't have gotten if we just stayed in Ruben's perspective. He's here and yet he can't, he's having trouble even communicating with me. And a scene where we are completely not in Ruben's point of view is the scene where Lou leaves Ruben. Because this scene is not about Ruben's loss of hearing, but rather his relationship with Lou, it's not as important to place an emphasis on his deafness. As an audience member, we want to fully hear and understand the interaction that's taking place in the scene and take a moment to sympathize with Lou rather than Ruben. Go back there right now! Promise! Say it! I promise if you... No! Say it! Promise! One minor thing that I would be interested in tweaking in the scene is the moment that Lou begins to drive away, we go back into Ruben's point of view and the sound of the engine just disappears and his curses become muffled, adding extra punctuation to the fact that Ruben is now alone. Now, a scene that's entirely shown from Ruben's point of view is the final scene of the film, which I think is the perfect way to end and what I'm going to talk about in greater detail. This scene immediately follows Ruben's moment where he reconnects with Lou. You saved my life too, Ruby. Which could have been a happy ending in itself. But Ruben has yet to embrace his condition and change his mentality, which his mentor Joe had been trying to get him to do this whole time. We're looking for a solution to to this. Up until this point, it's clear as day that Ruben hates the way his implants make everything sound. Yet he continues to use them to communicate with others and possibly because he feels obligated to since he sold everything precious to him to get them. Now, Ruben walks down the street on a beautiful day and the audience experiences the world through Ruben's perspective. And the world just sounds noisy and unnatural and borderline painful. This initial long shot really gives it time to sink in. These shots of kids playing juxtaposed with discombobulating, disorienting audio wipe all semblance of joy from these images. Ruben is now on a bench, observing, yet almost cringing. This dolly shot over the shoulder, with cars and people passing by, just sell how noisy the world actually is, and then there's this. A church bell rings, and much like the song sung by Lou and her father, this is supposed to be a beautiful noise. The cut to the steeple is rather quick before we cut back to Ruben, and this is his breaking point. The implants come off. Just as the noise level reaches its peak, the world goes silent. An eyeline cut back to the steeple. This is the same shot as before, but in silence, it takes on a new meaning. It's no longer the source of a horrific noise, but an image of beautiful architecture against a blue sky. The cutback to Ruben is once again a good example of using eye movements to motivate in and out points of a cut, and check out my last video if you want more detail on that. The cut back to the skateboarding kids shows us that we don't need to be able to hear to observe moments of joy like this. Cut back to Ruben again. Eyes motivate the cut, and we hang on this gorgeous shot for 12 whole seconds. And this is a long time for a cutaway. And what this length does is give this scene a sense of serenity. You know, we've all looked out at beautiful scenery in silence, just taking in the natural beauty of the earth, and Ruben seems to be doing just this, and he begins to embrace the absolute silence. Nielsen hangs on the final shot of the film for an entire 34 seconds, signifying the inner peace that Ruben was able to find. 
sitting on a park bench in the middle of a sunny day. Cut to black. Now besides the incredible sound design and acting from Riz Ahmed, I believe what really makes this scene great is its pacing. The scene could have been half the length and maybe could have accomplished something similar. However, I think holding on these last two shots was absolutely necessary to achieve the impact that this scene deserved. In just 35 seconds, we see a man whose sense of hearing and way of life that was stripped away from him slowly realize that he's just found inner peace, in peace itself. In that moment, Ruben understands the significance of Joe's mission. And you've become very important to a lot of people around here. You can't fix deafness, but you can fix the negativity and despair that accompanies it. Editing this scene from Ruben's perspective allows the audience to internalize these emotions especially when the audio transitions from that wretched metallic noise to absolute silence. And just like how Ruben found peace, the audience experiences the same effect. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't checked out The Sound of Metal yet, it is free for all Amazon Prime members at the moment, and I highly suggest you check it out. Let me know in the comments your favorite scene in that film, or if there's a scene you want me to go over in another film. And hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, it does help the algorithm suggest this video to others interested in editing. I'll see you next time.